Hey guys, Summer is here, and while the blockbuster season may have begun a little bit early with Age of Ultron, it's time to delve into a sequel 22 years in the making. Welcome to Jurassic World. I just saw this movie with Raven, and once we left the theater, she insisted that I review it as soon as I got home. Our story begins in the not-too-distant future, Somewhere in time and space. where we see a new batch of baby dinosaurs as they make their way into the world. It's worth pointing out that in the original movie, we see dinosaurs breaking out of their eggshells with their mouths, just like modern-day reptiles. Yet these dinosaurs have enough upper body strength to break out with their arms. This may not seem plausible to all you biology buffs out there, but it'll make more sense as the movie progresses, trust me. We then meet our two child leads, Gray and Zack. Gray is the typical nerd that we're supposed to identify with, and surprisingly, he still has actual toys in his room instead of having his face glued to an iPhone. Zack is an asshole who never appreciates what he has. I... I love you. See you later. Vamanos! Bye. Okay? Bye. Good god, the teenage protagonist is having trouble saying I love you to his girlfriend? I'm having Transformers 2 flashbacks! By the way, we never see this girlfriend again. We're going to see plenty of other scenes showing off how Zag is a dick, so her character was completely pointless. Their parents send them off to Jurassic World, a reimagining of the original Jurassic Park, except for the fact that it actually works. This new and improved park has had thousands of visitors over the last ten years, there haven't been any accidents or escaping dinosaurs, it's all absolutely perfect. And I'm sure that this particular visit to the park won't result in anything going wrong whatsoever. What do you think, Han Solo? I got a bad feeling about this. Eh, what do you know? The kids were supposed to meet with their Aunt Claire, who no doubt has the most adorable little outfits prepared for them, but she's too busy running Jurassic World, so she has the kids picked up and looked after by her personal assistant. Ron's got your VIP access, so you can get on all the rides without waiting in line. Let's go! Dude, she said we had to wait. I don't want to wait anymore! Seriously, wow. If the movie just ended up being a camera following these kids as they walked around and took in some of the sights, I'd be cool with that. We then meet Aunt Claire, played by Bryce Dallas Howard, who is looking for some new investors to help provide funding for some new attractions. Why do they need new investors? No one's impressed by a dinosaur anymore. Twenty years ago, de-extinction was right up there with magic. These days, kids look at a stegosaurus like an elephant from the city zoo. I think I missed something. Since when were elephants unimpressive? She exposits, along with Dr. Henry Wu, who is one of only two returning characters from the first movie, that they've created a new hybrid dinosaur called an Indominus Rex, which was specifically designed to be as scary as possible. I'm sorry, but doesn't that just sound like a really, really bad idea? I mean, what good could possibly come out of combining more than one animal to... Give the... Hmm. I just completely forgot what I was talking about. After piquing the investor's interest, we jump back to the kids. Gray acts like anyone who would act in a freaking dinosaur park, while Zack is bored out of his mind. Okay, how many times has this kid been to Jurassic World that everything here has become passé? I personally have been to Disneyland more times than I can remember, and everything there still feels fresh and amazing to me. Even if these kids have been here multiple times, and there's been nothing to suggest that that's the case, how the hell can this kid be so damn bored? Why is he more concerned with looking at random girls when you've got a dinosaur petting zoo right in front of you? The girls are still gonna be there when you get home. Your parents went through a lot of trouble to get you here. Put your dick away and enjoy the dinosaurs, you little ingrate! We then meet Jurassic World's foremost animal trainer, Owen, played by everyone's favorite galactic guardian, Chris Pratt. He's just trying to maintain a working bond with the Velociraptors, but Vincent D'Onofrio here wants him to train them to become hunters for the military. Mm, bad idea, Vincent. Didn't you ever see Dino Riders? It only lasted one season. Weaponizing dinosaurs just isn't that viable of a franchise concept. When I was your age, I rescued a wolf pup. It's like two months old. Could barely walk. I used to sleep on my bed. Watch over me. 
My wife, she came at me with a steak knife. Took a chunk out of her arm. You put him down? I don't know. We had a unshakable bond, you know? After revealing some exposition about how she and Owen used to date, Claire tries to get him to control the new Rex. But surprisingly, it tricks them into letting it out of its enclosure by making it look like it's already escaped. Clever girl. She runs free after giving the security guard a rather undignified death, and we later cut back to Gray and Zack. They've gotten away from their chaperone, and they eventually make their way into what is probably the worst attraction in the entire park. Don't get me wrong, I love the idea of getting the guests as close to the dinosaurs as possible, but why bother with personal hamster balls when they've already got perfectly fine safari buses at their disposal? What's stopping someone from just driving one of these things head-on into one of the dinosaurs and causing a stampede? Sure, the passengers are probably safe inside, but rampaging Triceratops are probably worth avoiding. And before you start thinking that these balls are remotely controlled like the Jeeps in the original park, Zack demonstrates their independent mobility by taking the thing off-road. Oh, great, now you're showing enthusiasm! Hey there! I'm Jimmy Fallon, welcome aboard the Gyrosphere. Oh yeah, and for some reason they got Jimmy Fallon to be our tour guide. Because when you want someone to lead you through the awesome world of these ancient, majestic titans, you think Jimmy Fallon. Of course, they eventually cross paths with the Indominus Rex, but they get away before becoming her next snack. Owen and Claire are hot on the Rex's trail, where they make the chilling discovery that she's not eating everything she hunts. It didn't eat him. It's killing for sport. Hey, those dinosaurs cost millions of dollars to make. You get back here and clean your plate or no dessert for you. The kids make their way into one of the garages from the original Jurassic Park, where they manage to hotwire an old jeep and get back to civilization. Who knew that you can leave cars to rot for a few decades and they'll still run perfectly fine? While that's going on, some of the more heavily armed forces of the park security hunt the wrecks from the air, causing it to crash into the aviary. This, of course, leads to all of the various pterosaurs inside to escape and raise all kinds of hell. wrong. I love it when movies show horrible things happening to people who really don't deserve them just so it's all the more horrific, but what was the point of that? We see this guy get plucked off, we see some security personnel get knocked around, but why take Claire's assistant and turn her into a human hacky sack? What, was she just too British and the movie confused her for the villain or something? And because this just wasn't horrible enough, the pterosaurs actually go after one of the baby triceratops from the petting zoo. I'm sorry, I can handle all the human carnage that's going on around us, but that is too much! Anyway, more swoop swoop, chomp chomp, and Claire and the kids get back together. We later see D'Onofrio convince Owen to use his raptors to rein in the Rex. We know that she is in Sector 5. This is a game we call hide and seek. It's a scent drill, we've done it about a thousand times with these animals. And I'm sorry for still having the Lego movie on my mind, but... I can't listen to Chris Pratt coming up with a plan without thinking of this music. We know that she is in Sector 5. This is a game we call Hide and Seek. It's a scent drill. We'll make it to the flight deck, and I'll use the Hadron Enforcer to kill Rome. Step 3, we break into Lord Business's office and we'll plunder his collection of relics for disguises. So he gets on a motorcycle and stalks through the jungle with his raptors. An image that I can't believe was controversial to some and they eventually find the Indominus Rex. But because raptor DNA is part of her genetic makeup, she convinces the other raptors to turn on the humans. That thing's part raptor. Light it up! Engage! <laughs> 
They herd our heroes into one of the labs, and D'Onofrio finally gets what's coming to him. Oh, shit! Easy? Easy, boy? Easy? Hey, hey! We're, we're on the same side, right? Right? Easy. Easy. I'm on your side. I was nice to a wolf pup! That means that I'm one with nature! Why did this happen?! Owen gets the raptors to fight on his side again, and Claire runs off to get some reinforcements. Who does she get? Remember when I said that Henry Wu was only one of two returning characters from the original movie? This is the other one. Oh yeah. It's the original T-Rex from the first movie. It is officially raining cinematic payoff. The combined efforts of the T-Rex and the Raptors are enough to defeat the Indominus Rex. Our heroes make it out alive with some minor injuries. Owen and Claire get back together. And the movie ends with the T-Rex roaring in triumph as she reclaims her lost kingdom. So, that was Jurassic World, and in my opinion, it's the sequel that we've been waiting for. Not only is this movie laden with all the carnage and dazzling special effects that come with the territory, but it really feels like this should have been the next logical progression in the Jurassic Park series. The first park went wrong, but then they actually worked out the kinks and turned it into a wildly successful venture that lasted for several years, and things only started going wrong after the park geneticists got too cocky and tipped their hand. One of the biggest themes of Jurassic Park is man's arrogance over nature proving to be their downfall, but how powerful can that theme be unless you give man some success to give him something to gloat about? The actors are great, the action scenes are exhilarating, the musical score sounds true to John Williams' original work, seeing the T-Rex reclaim her throne was all kinds of awesome. This movie is definitely worth seeing for yourselves. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm off to go buy some Jurassic World Legos. See you later! Sorry.